Hello, and welcome to Nerd Variety, the podcast where we talk about all things nerd culture, geek culture, and the variety culture. Nerds! I don't know what that last one means. It means variety. So, today we are talking about different forms of acting. Uh, Specifically, we're looking at the ones I can think of. Uh, Live action, uh, voice acting, and motion capture. And in live action, we will include uh, not just on screen, but also uh, a little bit of theater acting. Yes, thank you. I feel like mostly to appease me, but it needs to be discussed. It is. It is entirely to appease me. Make sure I don't give Hunter too much crap. Oh, you do that anyway. Well. Uh, (laughs) So, without any further ado, let's just get into live acting live action acting so what what are some of uh well first of all do either of you have any experience in live acting i do yeah i did a ton a ton of theater in high school um and that's pretty much it but it was definitely something i was pretty passionate about and would have gone into had it not been as uh likely to get a good job in as physics fair enough uh, you have to be you have to put a lot of, it's, it takes a lot uh, yeah yeah it takes it's a long it's a long like it has one to be of like things a, where i feel like at the end of the day maybe you make more money than someone who yeah. who teaches physics but if you're good physics teaching is and lucky. yeah nice yeah you have to, you have to kind of kind of sell your soul a little bit uh, yeah to, yeah yeah to, to follow through all the way <laughs> yeah so yeah. yeah. Uh, Josh, you done any uh, live acting? Live action acting? No, nothing beyond uh, a little morning TV show I did in high school. Uh, just doing some skits there. It's a lot of you know, learn the script, do a bunch of takes, uh, make sure you have the energy that you need for the you know the, to match for the joke to work or to sell whatever sell the announcement. Yeah, uh, I have done. A little bit, kind of. Uh, it was all in college uh, when I was studying film. And uh, I, I helped a couple uh, classmates with their projects uh, by doing some acting. I remember one, uh, one classmate uh, I helped. Uh, I don't think it was actually for a class. I think it was a film festival. Uh, she did a silent film, and I, I was just one of, like, three people in it. I think it won a thing. I don't remember. But... Um, I- do you remember that? Did you see it? I was actually. I remember I was in your silent film that you. Remember you had you had you me were do a sign. I think you. Yeah, you had me and um. What's her name? Um, what is her name? Do you remember Taylor? Not Taylor. Because Taylor Mon- was Mo- the one that did Monica. it. Monica. Monica. I remember her. Yeah. I don't remember doing a silent film. It was a. Uh, it was like I think it was you and two other and like two other like students. And we were like going to the the, the campus um, to uh, in the like uh, like the, court, the courtyard. Yes, and I went, do remember. And I was, that, it was the whole thing. I was trying I to get that. her. I was like, You're right. like, oh, who's that girl? It was, the, how, it was how to get the girl's number. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I got that. I got you. Yeah. So of course, you know, I I did some acting for other people and for myself. And okay, Hannah, go make some tea. Um, but, you know, of course, I, being a film major, also had to create some stuff. So I, I have some experience, limited experience, but still experience on, uh, on both sides of the camera. Uh, and also, you know, I took a, an acting and directing class where we had to, you know, we had to switch out roles. Uh, and I've had to, you know, go through a script, uh, make sure to, like, mark notes in it figure out my character learn about my character figure out for myself my character's motivations and everything right uh i write out the beats and do all that i kind of hate it (laughs) but um Mm -hmm. that's just i mean i probably because i've had i had limited experience with it and uh i'm i'm bad at it just because of my limited experience i think but um and i'm just awful at memorizing things which is a major part of it so yeah yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing to hear about how that's one thing that actors have to do as far as prep, prep work, right? Like being able to memorize things in like a crazy, crazy way. 
Yeah, I, I do think uh, something that makes it a little easier is from what we were taught in that class on how to learn your character and everything, it's more important, I would say, to learn like your beats, like the story beats, what's happening, and uh, just understand your character because then it kind of helps you get a little more into your character's headspace and just understand maybe naturally how they might respond. So it's also important to understand that so when you are actually that mostly comes in handy for when you forget what your line is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. which you would be make something up. I imagine that would be a big problem with me if I were to do it much. But uh, well, yeah, it's I mean, definitely it's something helps you fall back on something just in case. It's definitely something I think that's a bigger issue in theater uh, rather than film because if you're filming, most of the time you can just like try again. Uh, yeah. When yeah. you're performing on stage, Good. if you forget a line. Um, I don't think people really, I don't know. You I don't probably have someone feed you lines. I know. I know that that's like a thing yeah. that you see in TV. I've never had anyone feed me lines while on stage. And I've been in like somewhere between nine and 12 performances over the course of my life. Yeah. Um, somebody, somebody give you a suggestion, like your, like your counterpart on stage. It's like, and. Okay. I've had that to... happen. Yeah, well, I don't, know if I've, yeah. I don't know if I've had that happen, but someone <laughs> from my school has had that happen. But I feel like you see in, in TV shows, like someone off, like off stage reading you lines. Yeah. And yeah. I've never had that. Now it might yeah. just be that I went to a teeny tiny little homeschool art school. Um, and it's the whole thing. Um, <laughs> we just didn't have the people for that. I don't know, but we always just had to deal with it. Yeah. If you forget your lines, you just got to figure yeah. something out. Yep. Yeah, so I would say that is just something between, you know, theater and live action that is, you know, it's good and bad about each, you know, with uh, film. The thing is, you know, like if you're recording something, obviously, yeah, you can kind of stop, you know, they, they can, the director can choose to cut and start again, or you don't even have to cut, you can just keep going and then just edit out the bad parts later uh but then again there's also the problem where you're paying people for their time so if the actor keeps messing up and takes more time that's more money that's being spent on keeping everything going yeah sure sure the uh, the uh, disaster artists uh <laughs> the room uh yeah in reference to the room where he couldn't get the line of how to get where he walks out of the the roof entrance and says his line uh, it just it took t- took him all day <laughs> yeah a worst case a worst case scenario yeah it did not hit her i did not it didn't oh hi mark oh, hi, mark. yeah <laughs> but you know that's just uh that's a little bit of it there's also of course uh you know in live action just in general you have to you have to really know where to you have to know exactly where to stand and everything uh i i imagine in theater you can be maybe slightly looser with that Uh, again i don't really know but i mean especially with a when you're on film you have to be set up like perfectly because you're obviously limited by the spacing of the camera and they have to get similar on they have to get a a very uh, specific frame they have to catch you in that frame yeah it's it's similar on stage because and and it's actually fun you we did exercises in various theater classes where like if someone was supposed to move like from one side of the stage to the other we would just have like as background characters or as kind of the other people in the scene everyone else kind of like shifts around them so you don't end up with like clumps of people so it's like if someone walks over that side you have someone in the background like walk over here to get a drink of water or something just to kind of like keep everything balanced Mm -hmm. and make sure everyone's not crowding up on one side yeah keep everybody Um, on their on their track yeah and you do have to be able to see everyone you don't want to be like blocking someone who's got lines um and they have to be seen not just by one camera but like generally by everyone you don't it's it's sometimes hard to make sure like everyone can see me (laughs) yeah and definitely with uh with like theater stuff again you have to be like facing the audience pretty much because everyone has to hear you and you have to really Mm -hmm. speak louder on film usually you're gonna have a a mic like on you you're gonna have a yeah a a lavalier mic or something and uh 
it's more about you know uh, going talking to the camera and just kind of mm-hmm. just kind of uh, acting for for that and everything you're not having to act for a stage for a mm-hmm. group of people right there yeah and um more intimate to be completely honest i'm not really the um blonde bombshell star kind of person i mean i am good for you um but i got a lot of like sort of side side characters in a lot of the plays that i was in and another interesting challenge is like i was in much ado about nothing and i was the messenger uh and i had like the second line and the second to last line and was pretty much on stage like the entire time i had other lines here and there but like pretty much on stage the entire play and just had to like pretend to be really into this thing that I'd seen happen a hundred times that was going on. Yeah, so, yeah, it's just a lot of like, like act, like expression. Just the expression mm-hmm. is not really using or not really, you know, saying anything, but just like people yeah. have to be able to read read what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Not looking out to the audience, being like, "Where's my mom?" Yeah. Or or just had yeah. like zoning out is the biggest risk, honestly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Especially because so. it's like, oh yeah, so and so loves whoever. I'm just gonna uh, hear. <laughs> So there are definitely some unique challenges that come with, with being in on the stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know for a lot of shows, they want you to look a certain way. Uh, you mm-hmm. know, if you're signed on for a role, you have to, you know, kind of look like that character to start out with. And they probably will maybe edit some things about your appearance, say, Hey, you maybe get it, change, change your hair, you know, lose some weight, gain some weight uh wear glasses or wear these glasses frames or wear contacts if you normally wear glasses uh get in shape or get in awful shape one of those some of those things yeah wear makeup don't wear makeup be, yeah, just and, gotta be prepared for anything and yeah i can definitely also imagine that's particularly tough on you know people that are uh like doing they have like multiple projects going on you know, like back to back or something. And then they have to do, they have to look a very certain way, a very specific way for one thing and then go right around to something else and look totally different. Yeah. Um, and I know that's, you know, you can see that that's tough on uh, like, um, I'm blanking on the term, like uh, Christian Bale. Yeah. Is, you know, who, uh, it's a method actor. That's what it is, mm-hmm. you know, that really commit to those roles and really commit to changing their body and style and oh, yeah. to yeah. to be how they are. Yeah. Uh uh he and Walking Phoenix both lost roles, lost like like he gained weight to play Batman and he Walking Phoenix lost weight to play the Joker. Uh so that was yeah. it's just a lot of commitment like as far as saying like I'm gonna eat just this for all this time. And even yeah. some of the uh Avengers uh actors they had to eat like stay shredded so they had to work out constantly and eat chicken and roasted vegetables for yeah so for so for so many months of the year yeah. and I actually i remember uh you know when i was at dragon con last year uh zachary levi went on a whole thing about how he had to do that for uh to be shazam yeah, yeah and that is kind of interesting but you know i also think that that can be i guess it depends on the extent that you take it to but um it can be an advantage you know, it can be, yeah. if you're, if you were unhealthy or something, then it can be a motivation to get you healthier if your role were to call for that. And uh, it, yeah, it just, I think that's a yeah, possible yeah. Yeah. Uh, advantage, you, not necessarily yeah, you, always going to be. Yeah, you can keep, you know, like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll cut out drinking like uh, four beers every, every day or six back every, every two days yeah. and maybe just have, you know, a couple and also work out and maybe add vegetables to my diet. <laughs> yeah. um, what, what do you think are some other advantages to live action? Uh, you get quicker recognition, for sure. Yeah, people recognize you a lot, a lot more when they actually see you and get more familiar with yeah. seeing your face and hearing your voice and connecting. Yeah. Same with studios. Studios will be like, oh, I can actually see this person in one of my projects. Let me give them a call. And, uh, and you know, based off of what they look, look like, you know. Yeah. Hannah, you got anything? No? I don't know. I just keep wanting to talk about 
one of like the major differences between theater and uh, film acting, but it's not not oh. the answer to the question that you asked. I mean, we're about to move on to voice acting, <laughs> so if you want to mention it now, yeah. now's the time. Just, I feel like the thing that people don't understand a lot about the one of the, what I think is kind of like the biggest difference is that when you're on stage, everything's kind of exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Like everything's mm-hmm. a little bit bigger, um, and you have to show emotions generally like less with your face and more with your body. Um, I feel like that's always brought up and made is it like known the biggest difference between uh, theater acting like film acting or something mm. but i mean that maybe just that's just me uh mm. having learned about that a lot of that. i mean you kind of have to really be able to like people want to be able to look at someone and automatically know what is going on with them if they don't have lines yeah to, and to say what's going on and especially if you're in a like a big theater you know mm-hmm. there may be someone really far back that won't be able to see anything mm-hmm. subtle that you do so you mm-hmm. have to be big and kind of yeah whereas with things. when you're on camera frequently the camera's like in your face yeah. Mm-hmm. And capturing like very minute details. Yeah. And maybe maybe that is a well known thing. I don't know. But I feel like it falls into that camp of like like if the same like realm of frustration for me is the the idea that those who cannot do teach. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. doing and yeah. teaching are very different. <laughs> like yeah. they're different skill sets. And I feel like people who are like, Oh, you know, if I don't make it in theater or if I don't make it in Broadway or on what am I saying? Hollywood, like if I don't make it in, on film, I'll just go be a theater actor. It's like, yeah. no, be a theater actor. It's like those oh, are different. Yeah. Those are different things. Yeah, yeah. Like they're not the same. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of uh, I think you know screen actors that love going off to the side and doing theater work. Uh, I guess it's, sure. it's a different kind. It's a just a, I think it's a different experience where they just like that form of inter- of storytelling better. Yeah, absolutely. But I I feel like anyone who thinks that they're you know, they can do either one equally and, like, they're basically the same. It's like, no, yeah. they're not. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit yeah. crazy. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, let's uh, let's talk a little bit now about uh, voice acting. So, uh, Josh, you're probably the most experienced in uh, the voice acting field. Yeah, I have a... And- interested in voice acting for a while now i took uh i i was kind of in a stage of pursuing it more uh and like a couple years ago i went to did a few workshops uh like intro to voiceover and then uh two animation uh uh workshops so i got to learn a lot from people that in, in the industry and learn about you know the different kinds like there's you know aeration there's animation um there's like announce radio announcements um and there's also just like like doing like just being like the voice of like a for or i guess reading something or like an instruct like, a te- like just teaching like as a like just teaching as a voice using your voice to teach someone just a crowd, uh, over like a, a medium yeah like i use my voice to teach people yeah yeah but I mean, not exclusively, I guess. I don't know. Though. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I understand. Yeah. yeah. But in those three things, you learn to use your, your natural speaking voice. Um, you start work on your reading ability because when you're in a booth, you're really just re- you're reading through the script, um, making little adjustments of like, oh, this needs to be enunciated or this needs to be said very quietly. And you have to really kind of have someone that you're talking to in the booth booth you might just be in the booth by yourself and that could not that could be you know a challenge that could be a challenge if you're yeah. you know, reading lines because you might not be talking to the person that you're talking to in the in the, um, the actual like show or whatever it is you're making yeah i, I get what you're saying because you yeah again you're not always gonna be and actually i think it, it seems to me like it's kind of rare that uh voice actors are actually in the room with the yeah. other actors so you the thing mm-hmm. You have to, you don't really have anybody that you're uh, acting off of. You know, mm-hmm. that you're... The thing that that makes me think of is I saw a video recently with um, Tom Holland and Will Smith in it because they came out with uh, mm-hmm. the movie Spies in Disguise like a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. And in the video, they're like, this is the first time we met and the movie just came out or something like that because it's animated. Mm-hmm. And so they yeah. had recorded all their lines separately. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. But they're like, hey, we finally get to see each other. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, in, in the Halo games, Cortana and Master Chief never shared any scenes uh, or, or never shared the time in the booth together. They were always, it was always done remotely. And then in Halo 4, they finally got to act in the same room, just to kind of give some more emotional depth. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I think of like, uh, I went to see uh, quite a while ago now, like 2014 or 2015, something like that. I saw uh, Archer live and it was, uh, I don't know if this was just a joke or a joke with truth entirely in it. Um, but like H. John Benjamin was talking about something. He's just, they're kind of looking at him. It's like, what? It's like, it's like, I, can I make a confession? It's like, you've never seen the show, have you? It's like, I, I've seen the parts that I'm in. <laughs> I've seen the parts that my character's in. It's like, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it, that that also could be a problem. You know, if you're trying to do it, you know, and it's maybe before you have the animation done, which I I don't know that much about it. I assume it's usually before animation's done so they can uh, do lip syncing a little better. Uh, but again, I, I don't know. Um, so that's one reason also I can think it might be kind of difficult to, to do voice acting for that kind of stuff when, you know, you, you don't know what your character looks like and you don't know what your character's actually doing at the time. You just have to kind of take notes and really interpret something. I'm sure you have like character yeah. sketches at yeah. least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got, they gave, they will give us uh character sketch sketches, um, during the workshop uh yeah but i mean you know again you're not actually seeing them like in motion uh not all the time but you have to they give you some like i guess some character you know blips about them like hey this, he likes you know food he's a big he's a foodie he's kind of snobbish he um is from this country here he's got three siblings you know kind of work with that and make it and make a character voice to go with him yeah and you know, I guess, I guess I maybe what I maybe I was thinking in my head something different than what I was saying. Actually, I guess thinking about it, it's more like I guess the the problem or the challenge uh, in my mind comes in in that you're not like you're not controlling that character. It's you know you're you're basically I guess giving a voice to someone else instead of becoming that character. Uh, again, that's my interpretation because, you know, live action, again, you're actually, you are that character. So you're moving them. You can decide like what their gestures are and everything. You're not doing that when you're doing voice acting. You're just providing the voice and you're not. But I think the voice so, is so much of who the character is. Yeah. I mean, I guess it can be. I don't think yeah, it, it always is. If you watch some more behind the scenes, you can see some some actors really getting into the roles and they kind of, I guess, put some of that activity they do or how they, because you have to, because you really are like, act like, you know, putting on a show in the booth as that character uh, to really kind of get into their shoes and to provide some, well, some life to, to life to them or to, I guess, uh, make sure you're in the right headspace for that character because you can't, you're not on screen with someone else, you're by yourself. And so you have to add a little more to it to be, actually be that character. Yeah. And so the, and so that, and that way your, your vocal performance matches whatever is being drawn out and animated. So I guess that I could see that being either a challenge or an advantage based on just how, how you interpret it, uh, how, yeah. how, you know, how the actor interprets that. Well, I like yeah. to think of challenges be... and advantages as the same thing, Hunter. All good right, for you, Hannah. Good for you. Because <laughs> yeah. you could, you could be, because you could look like anyone and do and be a yeah. and be the voice for the character. You could be you know, like I think uh, in the I think for Family Guy, uh, Cleveland's voiced by a white dude. Um, Seth MacFarlane voices like Peter Quagmire, uh, a baby, Brian, a dog. Yeah, he uh, bunch of characters. <laughs> Can voice Seth uh, Rogen, or sorry, uh, not Seth Rogen. Um, Seth Green voices. Uh, I think yeah. Chris. He, voice, I think voices, he voices be... Roger as well. And like Roger everybody in Robot Chicken, well, probably yeah. about half the cast in Robot Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I think that might be part of the reason that I never really like f pursued stage acting is because I pretty much have looked like this since I was 15, and was always cast as like the mom or the teacher. 
and was just mm. immediately like, that's what I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, mm. And and I felt like voice acting, I have thought about voice acting. Um, I felt like there was a lot more potential there to be kind of whoever you want. And honestly, one of yeah. my biggest dreams is to stand in a, a booth by myself and make superhero grunting fighting noises. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we can make something. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, I'm, I'm totally down. You I am be, too. You could be the hero. Basically, as soon as I realized I couldn't actually be a superhero, I wanted to voice a superhero. Yeah. Which was, you know, around like age 14 or something. Yeah. Or you could be a demon. I don't think my voice will do that. You can do whatever, though. No. Or you could be you could be whoever you want. It's actually fun because I, I um it's I what I do for a living is almost like D and D esque, but with math for elementary schoolers. Um, and so there's four characters and they do have all of their own voices that I give them. And it's like, I've watched other people teach and they don't use voices and I don't understand it. Yeah. I'm like, how do you, you, there's like this little elf dude and his voice sounds like this. And this is what he sounds like. And I'm like, don't understand how you could just read his lines in a normal voice. I don't get it. Don't understand. No, no imagination. Unless it is an actual elf that's reading the lines. (laughs) I don't think it is. Um, but then again, I've never met any of my coworkers in person, so they can they can go on somewhere, Hunter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just I, I do think it's it is something that you can really be like anybody uh, if you're doing voice acting. It, yeah. I I <laughs> have been very surprised uh, on occasion. You know, when if I actually look up who's a voice actor for a character, it's like, mm-hmm. wow really yeah (laughs) like uh i was probably i was probably that way the first time i i learned that uh meg on family guy is uh mila kunis and i was like what yeah yeah i think the biggest one for me (laughs) with that is um when i started watching footage of uh god of war 4 and that's christopher judge who i loved from stargate sg1 Mm -hmm. um and he's just Mm -hmm. got like this he's intensely low voice like i've heard people be like is that like pitch to go even lower and they're like no that's just what he sounds like yeah and he's incredible you know i always i always say there's uh like two two kinds of people that are great in voice acting there's the people that are like chameleons not even the right word because it's just your voice but you know like that can change their voice to just about anybody yeah tara strong is full range Uh, yeah there are people that can sound like anybody and then there are people that sound like themselves, but they That's have such a distinct, open. but they have such a distinct voice that mm-hmm. they, like the characters that they are known for, it's, you kind of tie the voice to that character. So they're mm-hmm. yeah. distinguished. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry, Josh, you sound like you want to say something? Oh yeah, yeah. It's, and there people aren't really looking for much of like an impressionist, um, when you're doing voiceover, they want you to get, I guess, I guess take that that type of voice and mold it into uh, another character. To which, if you're good at like using, like, oh, I, if your voice has a good range and if you can do different impressions, you can also apply that to making multiple characters instead of being like, oh, I'm just gonna do this Joker impression and make it and take over Mark Hamill's job or, Not or you happen. know, no. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, um, one one person that I was thinking of, I always forget his name though, because I think of him mostly as a voice actor. Though I know he's been in a good bit of uh, live action stuff too. Is uh, Lance Reddick? Um, you may remember him. He was in. Uh, I think I may have even talked about him on the show before. Uh, he was in well, The Wire. Uh, though I don't really know who he was in there. Fringe. Um, he was in John Wick. He was the, uh, I can't remember the, the title. He was the guy at the counter, um, you know, who's like the the manager or something or the assistant manager, what, whatever. Uh, I don't know. If you've seen John Wick, you, you know who he is. Um, mm-hmm. Again, he's the guy at the counter who ends up taking care of the dog, uh, yeah. the, the second dog. Um, he's also in the game uh, Quantum Break, both live action and... Uh, well, probably motion captured, but yeah, uh, he's also in like a Destiny. He plays Zavala 
And uh, that I think is just a very, very distinctive voice. And mm -hmm. every time I hear him, I think of him as that character pretty much. And I, you know, I don't even remember like, oh, he's this other guy too. Yeah. He doesn't even do anything. Same with Keith David. Like he doesn't really do anything to change his voice, but he's so distinctive. He kind of lends himself to whatever yeah. character he plays. Yeah. This is a powerful uh, character who you don't mess with. <laughs> Yeah. Or he's got some wisdom on you, so to speak. Yeah. But uh, now let's let's uh, quick just uh, move on to our last uh, section, our last type of acting here, uh, which is we've kind of mentioned it a bit, but uh, motion capture, uh, which is is a bit of a I'd say a more recent one. You know, um, it's. It's not so, it's kind of, to me, I think of it as a strange mix almost of live action and voice acting because obviously you, you usually are moving around and actually acting with your body, but you also have to do, you're not always going to look like yourself and all those subtle movements aren't necessarily going to transfer over. So you do have to rely on your voice a lot. So I think it takes probably the hardest parts of each of those and mixes them together. Well, and I think what I, I have absolutely no experience with it, but I think um, one of the most interesting things about it would be you're, if you're doing it, you're not necessarily as likely to be playing a human or, or you're, I don't know, did, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that because I might be wrong, but I feel like if, imagine if you had to play a tree, right, you have to like, act like a tree and be like yeah. stiff and branchy and so i feel like there's an added like physical element to it that mm -hmm. you don't really have in the other ones unless you're playing a tree on stage which could happen yeah uh yeah there's a it's a kind of like the whole you like, there, it really plays on the whole using your imagination thing you have to kind of imagine you're a jedi imagine you're an eight foot alien imagine you're a tree you know, a tiny uh, I'm just thinking of Ed. Imagine you're, I don't imagine know. You're, imagine I mean, you're a, Hannah, uh, you, you said that and you said being stiff and everything. All I can think of is Groot, though. So yeah. Vin Diesel as Groot, so uh, yeah. it didn't quite apply as being stiff and everything. I was thinking of Ents from Lord of the Rings. This is where my brain was at. Okay. I don't know if they did motion capture, but imagine if you tried to play an Ent. Like, how you would have to add, like, this other physical element onto the acting. Yeah, I guess walking on stills or maybe they get like a stand-in what was that I, walking I, I, on sunshine? i don't remember how they i don't remember how they did that mm -hmm. yeah I don't know. yeah um so yeah what kind of prep work goes into like motion capture uh i kind uh, of imagine there's pretty similar uh prep work in all of these you know learning yeah. your character kind of understanding their background and uh knowing your lines yeah well again i think if you're going to be playing something that isn't human if that's something that is you know an actual thing uh not to bring up the cats movie that i don't think any of us saw no but, um but like if you're going to be a cat you need to like go figure out like how cats move and like be some specific about that and figure out how to turn that creature into something that's a little bit more humanoid Mm -hmm. um and the same could go for dragons you just could like go and watch chameleons for a day i don't know but dragons, Komodo <laughs> lizards yeah uh, like uh, figure out go look at some reptiles and be like how do you function yeah um teach me your ways to get like this weird other level of of inspiration yeah yeah, yeah you have to be comfortable with wearing uh with well not susan not wearing uh being physical uh in the the in the stage area uh, you'll probably have to do some stuff on wires, on, um, you know, you have to be probably be doing a lot of imaginary things, something, but things you might yeah. have to be physical for so they can at least get some movements tracked before getting you kind of digitized. Yeah, and I imagine there's a lot of trying to act kind of like with voice acting too, but, you know, also with motion capture, you're doing it physically as well. You kind of have to act with things that aren't there and pretend that they're people or just pretend that there are objects mm -hmm. and stuff that aren't there. Um, mm -hmm. Which, you know, is becoming more and more of a thing. But uh, I think, I, I don't even know, honestly, if it, if it would be getting easier or harder. 
Uh, easier because it's, it's like they know more about how to do it well. Uh, it, of course, the suits. I'm sure. I'm sure one thing is for sure. Like you can be, you can do, you can learn to be physical as much as you need to be on a movie before your stunt double comes in, and you can act on a stage. But there's also going to be a thing of like being like technically mindful of like all the stuff you have to put put on and what you have to do for the cameras and yeah. you know uh, making sure that you're following ex- explicit directions because that mo- mocap stuff is is probably pretty expensive. Yeah, and I imagine you just have to learn to be I don't know more durable and uh, just more flexible with stuff because you have to you know I'm sure a lot of that stuff just if you're wearing like a lot of things for motion capture, you're going to get like get really hot first of all, because they have to light mm-hmm. the crap out of that green room or that green screen, yep. whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> and then, you know, if you are, are actually wearing props and stuff as well to go along with that, it's, it can be heavy. You know, a yep. lot of times they do a lot of makeup as well as uh, motion capture stuff. So mm-hmm. like, just think of uh, Nebula. Uh, well, I, think, I think a lot of that for her was pros- was just makeup and prosthetics. Yeah, again, like I think I think it was a lot of that, but I I'm sure there was also I mean I I know there's also a lot of CGI stuff that goes in there as well, you know, so a lot so of motion good. capture, especially since she's a robot, so like when limbs get torn off and stuff. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, you, know, you have to deal with that as well. Yeah, you have to wear some have like a green a green on your arm for that scene. Um uh I'm thinking of like, like Tony's Tony and Rhodey um, in uh, Civil War. They they were walking around in mocap suits with maybe a little bit of armor on to kind of give it some realism, but most of it yeah. was mocap. Um, I think Far From Home was mostly was mostly you know CG because they were most of that was filmed so. most of that was filmed in uh, just a, a, a Atlanta green screen room. Yeah, it's probably at Pinewood. Oh yeah, yeah. That's where they do a lot of their stuff. Pinewood's taking over. Yeah. Yeah. um, So that's some challenges uh, of motion capture. Again, it can be really heavy trying to act with different things or things that aren't there. uh, All that sort of stuff. Uh, What what do you think are some advantages? Personally, it just sounds like a ton of fun. That's what I was going to say. It just (laughs) seems like it would be a lot of fun. Although at the same time, I can imagine it would it could be difficult because you have no idea what it's going to look like. And in the end, uh, you might just be, and you know, you've heard from some actors just that are like, I feel ridiculous <laughs> trying to yeah. act. I was going to say, stuff. I feel I'm like sure one do. of my biggest challenges would be like trying not to like bust out laughing. Yeah. It's just being like, let me get all, my, all let me, completely absurd. Let me get all my laughs out because this is, this is all just ridiculous. And then, okay. all right, I'm serious now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, watching, um, I think Bennett, you watched that. Remember that that uh, behind the scenes for the for Desolation of Smog, and mm-hmm. uh, he Smog. does do the smile, whatever. He does the motion capture in a in a in a big room, and then uh, he goes back and does the voiceover. And he's kind of, I think he's matching it with the like pro the prototype animation they have for him. So it kind of everything kind of syncs up a little more. Yeah, but it seems like a lot of fun. It seems like it's very physical, um, which is especially I feel like if you're someone who does a lot of film acting, you don't necessarily get to be very physical all the time because um, it's more uh, like focused on your your face and your emotions that way. Um, so I think it might be fun to do something that just like really takes your whole body like that. Yeah, so again, that's just, uh, you know, that's sounds like we've covered a lot of challenges uh you know good things bad things uh prep work neutral things about uh motion capture voice acting and live action acting and uh i don't know if i want to do any of those i want to do all of it i was gonna say maybe i want to do all of it but not a lot because i i know you were rather rather direct right hunter Hmm? you could I would. I would rather write or direct. There you go. If I could, uh, or if I could do act sound for a design, living, I would actually rather. I would actually most. I would really want to do <laughs> sound design. That's my thing. But, Hannah, which one would you rather do? Which one would I rather do? 
Well, you said well, you're saying like you'd rather do like you do all three, and if you, if you could, I would love to do all three. It really has been. I was like a huge fan of Teen Titans when I was a kid, and literally like when I stopped believing I could be a superhero, I wanted to act a superhero in a cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always been something I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I would still love to do that, but I also would really enjoy. I don't know if I would enjoy film as much, just because I feel like it's. I don't know maybe a little bit too serious <laughs> sometimes, yeah. but I've, I don't know. I'd be down for any of it, honestly. What about you, Josh? Voice uh, acting? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I need to get back on that. Seems like <laughs> the obvious one. But no. yeah. yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of like on screen acting. I feel like there's a lot of pressure of like, you know, you have to look a certain way. You have to, you know, you have people, you know, do I, I feel I that? Mm. Yeah. Uh, so and there's just a lot of pressure as the the lead that you that you'd be under. Yeah. Um, motion capture will be fun. Yeah, I I think you'd. Is that me? I could actually be pretty good at acting, but I was given mostly like side roles and stuff when I was in high school, um, for who knows what reasons. So I just want to prove myself. I can do it. You can do it. I can do it. Well. Uh, I think we all have our goals now, and uh, yes. we need to work towards making those happen. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, we will. I will. We'll help out. Go to a workshop. Go to a workshop. Uh, man. I have no go money. People uh, interested in this, go to a workshop. You can learn a lot of things. Go to meetup. There are things. Uh, anyways, that's uh, that's it this week uh, on acting. Hannah, you're next week, right? What do we got? I am next week. We're going to be talking about um, fantastic... <laughs> Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Not the movies, just literally Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Where? What are our favorites? Where do we see them? What are some maybe different interpretations of our favorite classic creatures? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about next time. All right. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. I'm excited. Uh, good. I wanna, I'm glad. I'm going to do it. So Find all of them. Catch yeah. them all. So uh, that was Nerd Variety, different forms of acting. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. I appreciate it, at least. I do, too. Yeah. Uh, Hannah's the only kidding. one that's not appreciative. Hannah does it. Um, <laughs> so like me and Josh, but not Hannah. Uh, and thank you guys. Until next time, nerd out. Bye. Nerd out.